G'day my friends, Marty Weir here from martysgarden.com.au with another exciting, awesome, cool video to help you guys get educated. Now I know many of you have been following along about the tomato cutting, and so I'm going to give you an update on that guy. We've got a name for it, and also it needs to be hardened off in the sun. So I'm going to give you a bit of a breakdown on how I've done it. We're going to look at some other water cuttings and some things that you can do possibly to save money in the future, which is really awesome. And I've got a dilemma with a tomato plant that I just bought that I'm, I'm potting up. Maybe you can help me solve that problem. But anyway, you're going to learn some cool tips and tricks along the way that you can implement in your garden. So watch the show to find out more, guys. Marty's garden is all about compost worms, composting, farming worms indoors and out, and growing some of the most awesome food around. You can learn how by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Welcome world to the Marty's Garden Show. So here we have it, our cutting tomato, yes. We've given it a name, Mr. Martinelli. Thanks everyone, all the subscribers and people that have written in names. Some great ideas for them, we kept it all Italian and I really like the name Mr. Martinelli for this tomato. Now it's about, well it come off a six week old tomato plant and it's currently probably about three weeks old itself since the cutting. I've had a little bit of problem. I've noticed a little bit of fungal stuff on the leaf because um, I've been spraying it with water a lot. Maybe I need to cut back on that and spray some worm tea and get the biology happening really nice over Mr. Martinelli. So hang in there, Mr. Martinelli. Don't get any fungal problems. Uh, and I probably need to bring it out more into the full sun. So at the moment, it's gone from the window to more full sun outside. And then look, now it's in a nice, nice big pot, as you can see. Here, nice big pot, and that'll grow for quite a while in there. And I'll take it out in the full sun, and that should eradicate uh, that fungal problem on the leaf because the fungus don't like, um, yeah, they don't like that full sun like that. And they generally attack plants like tomato plants that are really sort of bushed up all together and not enough airflow. So probably just a bit more airflow. Now the reason I'm using this bucket is because the light reflects reflects all around in there. It shoots light up onto the plant and it's the soft light. So I use that, but that can come out probably of the bucket maybe nearly soon as well when it goes out in the full sun, but then I've got to find another tray for it. Now just hold on because I've got something more to show you here. This is one of the cuttings that I've just started. Now we've got a few plants going and we haven't really got a name for this little fella either. Tiny Tim, we can't use that one because everyone's using Tiny Tim for their plants, but still no roots as of yet coming out, but in a day or so, I don't always wait for the roots to come out, I just stick them in one of these little pots like you would have seen in the other video if you've been watching it. New name for this one, so we've had 100% strike rate. And if you haven't seen the other videos, this has got uh, compost, worm casting, and uh, per, uh, vermiculite in, I was gonna say perlite, but it's definitely not perlite, it's way too big, so vermiculite. And it's coming along pretty well, and there's no little fungal problems on there, so, Morning sun on the window, doing really well. Nearly getting 100% strike rate. So gotta be stoked with that right now. I've got some more plants just down below here that I wanna show you. Now this one is Vietnamese coriander or Vietnamese mint. Now hopefully the camera will get in on that because it's focusing on my face at the moment. But you can see these roots here. So if we move my face away, maybe, oh, there we go. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you can see that there's some roots in there, right? Oh yeah, there we go. Now these strike really easy, like Kang Kong in um, water. And they call it Vietnamese mint or Vietnamese coriander. Now I've got some chocolate mint growing in here and that'll also just strike in water. So you can do that with you know, lots of different plants. You can just trial it and see how well they strike. Especially plants that are semi-aquatic, they will go for it or plants that grow roots uh, off their stems like tomatoes. So even basil will do it and lots of different herbs and things. Soft stem plants really do strike well a lot of the time. And look, I'll give you a little tip. If you've got some worm castings, you put a little bit of worm casting down the bottom. And what happens is when you put the worm casting in, 
this growth growth sometimes I get my words mixed up so excuse that growth hormones in there and that'll just so dissipate like a bit of a worm tea going through and it'll send little receptors off to the hairs around the outside of the stem go oh there's food down there and I'll throw some roots out and go down and look for it so that's a tip for you and it helps the plants uh, set up really really well now what I've got to do now is I've got to go outside because um, I need to film some more I've got this problem with this plant and I'm not really sure what to do. So watch the video. Um, um, I think maybe I'm justifying the action right through, but just watch the video. <laughs> Let's go finish it off. So we're in our backyard here at Marty's Garden. You might be wondering why I've got the mask on. Well, I'm making up this special potting mix so I can pot up this determinant truss cherry tomato which I just got from the markets and I saw the guy when I was walking away smoking a cigarette. That could be a bad thing because they carry tobacco virus on their fingers and you really don't want to bring that into the house. So I'm taking a risk now with this plant, but I think it will be all right. So I'm hoping because this guy grows plants all the time. That's what he does for a living. I think he's a horticulturist or something. So what I've got here is in the bottom of this mix here is this stuff. Uh, it's called perlite and they use it a lot in uh, mixes with heavy mixes in big pots and things like that with uh, in hydroponics with uh, cocoa peat and stuff and it really aerates and fluffs it out so i put it in the bottom because this is quite a large pot in a mixer of so i've got sifted compost worm castings and uh, cocoa peat in here as well and so this plant is going to go into this pot here now I've done it about one third of the way up and we can measure it and go well it needs a little bit more because this is a type of tomato that trusses out being indeterminate determinant sorry it actually gets small and bushy and they're good for pots and small spaces and good for hanging plants as well and you don't come along and nip out all these different buds you actually let them grow and spill over the pot and that way you can just come and harvest off the side and they do fruit quite prolifically and then end quite quickly as well really good early season tomato and then end of season tomato as well because you'll get fruit much quicker and i like to grow the determinants and the indeterminates so this one was a good score as long as it doesn't have that tobacco virus so i can take this off because i've already put that into there now when you're playing with vermiculite as well it can be a bit dusty so you do need to actually like be careful with this stuff if it's really dry because It'll get down your throat and into your lungs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up a bit just by throwing a bit in there, get it a bit more height in this pot, like I said. And this just gives it a bit more drainage, a bit more area, aer aeration. And the vermiculite will hold moisture and suck in that nutrient. So as we're grabbing these plants, generally they can be pot bound. And what happens is most of the time you're not buying an organic seedling, so it's going to have little um, fertilizer balls around the outside look I'm not too worried about that I just for this one I'd prefer to have an organic one but running behind time and I really want to have one of these plants so I'm going to grow it into an organic medium so I wish I could say don't panic this one's 100% organic um, but it's not because well there's hardly any fertilizer balls in here actually so it's not going to be too much of a problem the current comes in closer with the camera and you can see now the depth that we've got to about there so i'm just going to backfill around the root system a bit now if the roots were um were more wrapped up i would have to tease them out more but they're looking pretty good that's a pretty good root system for that plant and i'll just sprinkle a bit of this around as well in there generally i'd mix them both together but I don't want to get this blend mixed up just for this one lot and so we'll get this in here and this is a nice see this container here nice big long deep container early season grow tomato container because it's got a nice long it'll get warm and it's got a nice long area for let that tap root get right down and uh, it'll keep the plant and the plant will hang spill all over the side of this pot being tall which would be really cool and i'll put it up on the 
on the balcony or on the tray or something like that in a high spot where I can just harvest it. Now, if it was a bigger plant, we might look at putting a little tomato, which is a little tomato, a little basil on the side, which is one of the companions here. You can see I've left a nice long root system on it, little baby one. We're just going to whack him in the side there like that as a companion plant. And then we'll water it in. Normally you would have a tray underneath, but I don't have a tray for this one at the moment, but I go and hunt one down. And so this is just the liquid coming out of the worm farm at uh, 10 to one. I've already pre-watered the plant before I potted it up and we're potting it in the shade to stop any stress in the coolest part of the day. So maybe you can help me out with this problem because everything in here is grown chemical free. Now some of the seeds that I got weren't 100% organic but a lot of them I've grown myself over time and you know they've become an organic seed and I've either struck cut cuttings or grown it from seed myself. Now as we go over here to the tomatoes this is the only culprit and since making that little video, I'm, I'm a little bit sort of like, oh, one tomato plant, one plant in this whole garden that is not like a chemical-free plant. And so we'll just go down and have a look at it here. And I'll flip over this camera. We're doing a bit of rusty camera work here. All right, guys, so just excuse the, the dodgy edits. And so, look, nice big pot quite healthy it's growing all in now just compost and worm castings but it has those little fertilizer balls around it and so I'm just gonna flip over this camera again we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna have a chat so I really want to know what you think what do I do with that plant now when I purchased it I thought this guy used only compost to strike and grow his plants and obviously after getting it and then potting it up and looking at it when I was going through the video. I was going, oh no, what am I going to say in the video now sort of thing. And, um, you know, I am the organics guy. I do everything through compost and worms. And this little plant here has some fertilizer balls in it. So what do I do, guys? Let me know in the comments box down below. So before we go, I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to my show, watching my videos, leaving comments, and just taking part and giving me the support. It really helps me keep going and it encourages me to make more content for you guys. Now, if you haven't subscribed to Marty's Garden, I highly recommend that you click the bell. And if you haven't hit the bell yet, do it so you keep updated. You're going to have lots of fun. You're going to learn lots of little things along the way that you can implement at your place. And have a great day. All at the same time, because you've been watching the show. It's the Marty's Garden Show. Lots of fun and more educational stuff coming on your way. Have a great day. Happy garden. We'll see you in the next video. We'll see you.